Good morning and uh, fuck this afternoon. Ah! The Red Box! Like, God! Ah! Ah! How do you do this? How? How? Ah! The Winnipeg Blue Bombers blew a 25 to 6 lead? Against, against the, the I have no quarterbacks, Ottawa Red Blacks. The no quarterbacks Red Blacks. That is the team we lost to. We lost to a guy who's a rookie making his first career CFL start against a veteran who his, his touchdown to interception radio is 9 to 2. He already has over a thousand yards this season. Like what? Crum was 0 and 2 in touchdowns and interceptions going into this game. 0 and 2. We have a great first half. We go we go up. We end up with a 25 to 6 lead. All we have to do is not screw it up. All we have to do is play good defensive football, which we did for half an hour, half a game, and then we just shit the bed. We are supposed to be going, trying to get our third Grey Cup in just a short amount of time to try to get that third championship, the one we were robbed of last year by the Toronto Argonauts. And this is the fucking team that does it? The, uh, the blowing 25 to six leads to possibly the worst team in the league. Who knows? Because the next time they play Edmonton, if Crum goes back to being, you know, looking like a rookie quarterback, then the Elks might actually get a win at home and we'll lose to the Red Blacks. Unbelievable. How can you play so good and so shit in the same game? This, this is unacceptable. So, I know a lot of Bomber fans are here to share the misery, because misery shared is misery squared. But I also know that a lot of fans of other teams are coming here to watch my misery, because they've watched our successes, and boy, they're gonna love this. Ryder fans are dancing on the grave of the second half that was this football game for us. Like seriously, they are dancing on that grave. And that's the thing, if they lose to Calgary, that's not embarrassing. This is the most embarrassing loss I have ever seen from the Bombers where I, to, at, at a point where I was watching football. This is the worst loss I've seen from them. And that's the thing, because I didn't, I didn't start watching the Bomber, like I watched it a little bit when I was a kid growing up, but the thing was is that I just generally wasn't into football until a lot later. Didn't start watching till a few years before that 2019 victory. And this is the most embarrassing loss I have ever seen them have. Just fucking pathetic. Let's go through this game now, shall we? Free game. Dustin Crumb starting for Ottawa. This shouldn't be a problem, but it was for some reason. First quarter. Two nuts start the game for the Ottawa Red Blacks. Um... <laughs> No, no, two game, uh, two note uh, for us. Sorry, uh, we'll kick it deep on Ottawa. They give up a single, one nothing Winnipeg. There'd be a big pass for Nick Dembski, and then there'd be a fifty two yard field goal, dead center, four nothing Winnipeg. If there's one guy we can't give any shit this game, it's to Sergio Castillo. Which, when counting the field goal in, um, if you count the field goal. In um, in overtime, then he now has 23 straight field goals. He's been absolutely stellar. 52 yards for Sergio Castillo. He's been playing great. Willie Jefferson gets a sack. 15-yard uh, misconduct penalty against Ottawa, but just them being disciplined here. The ball will be on the two-yard line. Prukop would get himself a touchdown. Convert is good. 11-0 Winnipeg. Big Hill would get a sack. So another sack against Crum. So we know how this defense can play. That's two just in the first quarter. Red, pla uh, Red Blacks would then get a uh, time uh, time count violation penalty. That would be the end of the first quarter. Second quarter, Ottawa challenges saying Winnipeg pass was incomplete. Challenge was successful. And to be fair, it was the right call. Houston would then get an interception. Good defensive play again. Jeffcoat would then get a sack the next time Ottawa was up. That's the third sack of the game now. McRae fumbles the catch. 
but then makes the right play. And so this is on the punt uh, punt return. Uh, McCray fumbles the, the return catch, and it drops just below him. However, he makes the right play, and he just d- dives on it. And I'm and so it's one of those things where I'm sure there will be some people be like, oh, why didn't he try to get anything? At that point, it's just in- important that you keep possession. So that was the right play by McCray there. There will be a 10-yard misconduct penalty for the Ottawa Red Blacks bench. So, again, another undisciplined play by the Red Blacks. Got to take advantage of that. There'd be a procedure penalty against us. However, Nick Dembski would go down and get himself a touchdown. The convert is good. 18-zip Winnipeg. Nothing. Uh, Like 18-nothing Winnipeg. So, very good spot right here. Let's see if they build off of it. Red Blacks get their first first down of the game with 4.22 left in the second quarter. That shows you how dominant the Bombers were in the first uh, in the first half of this game, and how this result is all the more pathetic because of that. Like honestly, the first half of this game with how good it was makes it so much more embarrassing than us just losing to the Red Blacks normally. Like this, oh boy, D line at this point looks excellent. Ottawa gets a field goal, makes this eighteen three. Um, pass block is being great. The running block. Uh, could, uh, needs, uh, could be a bit better running. We never really got the running game going this entire game, first or second half. Let's go into the third quarter where everything starts to fall apart. Red Blacks start with a good drive. They really haven't gotten any, cause they had a half decent drive to end the second half. Bombers, you know, hopefully you come back out and stop. No, you don't. Uh, no, you just let them get a good drive. They go down and get, get themselves a field goal, at least making this 18 to six for, uh, the Bombers. Ottawa challenges for pass interference and fails. Walter Jr. then gets a sack. That is sack number four, I believe. Sack number four, I believe. There would be a big pass to Brady Oliveira. Funny how Brady Oliveira had more success catching than he did running this game. He just never could get it going. Uh, Red Blacks D-line played pretty well on the on the run plays uh, this game. It didn't play really well on the pass plays to start. They did on the, the to finish this game. What, what a... Th- Something. I don't even know. Walatarski gets himself a touchdown. Convert is good. 25 to 6 Winnipeg. Third quarter's not even over. We would not get a single point in the fourth. For a fourth quarter team, we didn't score in the fourth quarter. And we gave up all those points. All those points for the Red Blacks to get back into this game. 19 points. Unbel- or actually, not 19 because they would get a field goal to end this, making this 25 9 for the Bombers. They would give up 16 points. Fourth quarter. Big throw by the Red Blacks. There'll be defensive pass interference against us. Turner over on downs as the Red Blacks are in the red zone, but they can't score. At that point, I'm like, okay, this is good. Defense maybe seemingly getting back into it. They're they're holding the, the Red Blacks off. Red Blacks, honestly, if the Red Blacks score there, we there's a possibility the Red Blacks could have won in regulation with how with how like just I just don't even want to talk about this fucking game. And then uh, there'd be, um, we would have a great run ball would go loose and Ottawa recovers and there'd be a sack by, uh, Mario or Maru. I can't remember how you say his name. And this is either the fifth or sixth sack that we've got against them. There'd be turnover on downs again, as the red blacks come in bomber ball, bombers throw a pick six, Zach Caleros with his seventh career uh, uh, pick six. So not a guy who throws them very often throws a pick six here and just Walterski, he doesn't position himself in the right uh, way to make that catch. Uh, it's a good throw by Caleros. I'm putting there on the receiver there. That was, that was a good throw. Two point convert is successful, but the Ottawa Red Blacks needed two, two point converts to tie this game. Both of them. If we just stop one of them, their game is dead and they get it. You get the two-point convert, making this 25-17 to 17 Winnipeg. The um, <clears throat> Ottawa kickoff goes deep uh, as they don't go for the onside kick. Uh, we would take an illegal uh, blocking uh, downfield as the ball was not thrown yet. So undisciplined penalty by us. Just pay attention, guys. Come on. Red Blacks use their last time out. This is very important because this means that they can't challenge any play in the future if they want to. So it's one of those things where we have the the ball is in uh, uh, like it's literally there's no excuse anymore because we could even win on luck with that. Red Blacks get a throw, get themselves down to the 11 yard line. And at this point, I'm panicking because I'm thinking like, what, what, what are we doing? Like, we're supposed to be the best team in this fucking league. Like, 
At this point, I, I'm I'm willing to say the Bombers are not the best team in this league. After this performance, fuck no. Fuck no. No. Are they capable of it? Yeah, they are. But they aren't performing like it. The games they win, we have not had a single game where we've won handily against some opponents that we should have won handily. Then we have that embarrassing loss against the Lions. I don't give a shit. If 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 Crum was was playing better than he should have, I don't care if every single Red Blacks player played the absolute best game of their lives. The talent, the, the sheer raw losing talent of this roster should be able to stop that. Should be able to stop that with the way we played. We got at least five to six sacks. Crum runs in, runs in for the touchdown, getting it himself. If that isn't a fucking metaphor if I've seen one. I swear to God, if we give this up. Come on, get to him, get to him, get to him! Oh my God, we missed Get him. to him! Get him down. Oh my God. We're going to overtime, guys. You know, if, if we haven't decided through us blowing a 25-6 lead that we need to wake up and get and pull our head out of our asses. Now's the time. Come on, come on. That looks good. It's good. Okay. Ottawa wins the OT coin toss. That that just sucks. Caleros gets sacked. So we have one play where we get a few yards, then Caleros gets sacked. However, that's okay because Castillo hits the field goal. Hits the field goal. Gets it. Castillo, like I said, he played well this entire game. The defense is what got us in that great spot there to get up 25 to 6. They allowed us that. They played really well, really shut down. Let's see if the defense can win us this game. Come on, guys. Get him, get him, get him, get him, get him. Oh my God. Get him! Fucking idiots! Fucking idiots! Ah! How do we screw this up? Unbelievable! Fucking idiots. I don't even know what to say anymore. This is the most embarrassing loss I have ever seen from the Bombers. But where I've been watching the game, there is, the, you know this, you know, it, you know it's funny. I, I was almost tempted to put on the thumbnail, the the Tampa Bay Lightning's photo of like the we have no words and we know you don't want to hear them and just smack a bomber logo on there because honestly that's like a perfect resemblance of this game. Is it one game? Yeah, but like, the Red Blacks went two years without a win at home. They finally just got one the other day against the Edmonton, fucking. Elks. If you would have told me that their second one would have been against yours truly, I would have said you were out of your mind. There is no excuse for us losing this game. I don't give a shit how many guys are out of the lineup. I don't give a shit how many guys are out of the lineup. Against like a third or fourth string quarterback, where we're up 25 to 6. I don't even I don't even know what we do. What like what do you do? To wake this team up. What do you do? Offense completely shut down after the first uh, after that they got that touchdown to get the, to the twenty five. Completely shut down. Just forgot like how the fuck we got there. Running game never got going. You know, that's partially on Oliveira, and that's partially on the running block of our O line. Pass block was relatively good. Um, even had a, a sack or two near the end of the game. But overall, I will say the O-line is not the number one thing to blame here. I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what to say. Where, where do we go from here, guys? Like, so. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Sure shit didn't enjoy that game. 
Uh, make sure you guys comment down below, like, share this video around, and I know non-bomber fans would love to share this video around, so if you're gonna at least do that, you know. <laughs> um, good game to the Red Blacks. They didn't give up. They didn't give up, but despite every obstacle, despite the fact that they were outmatched in essentially every category, they never gave up, and it burned us. So props to the Red Blacks, seriously. And if you have bombers, if it wasn't time to wake up before, it's time to wake up now. So uh, I'll see you guys next time. Can they take the lead on this drive?